समस्त जन कल्याण निरत करुणा नमा चिन्मय देव Okay, wonderful. So let us start. Last week we covered verses ten and eleven. So let's read those verses. Vaya sigate kaha kama vikara ha shushke nire kaha kasara ha kshine vi. ते कह परिवार ज्ञाते तत्वे कह संसार भज गोविंद भज गोविंद गोविंद भज मूढ़मते मा गुरुधन जन यौवन गर्व भरती निमेषा काल सर्व माया माया मयादम अखिलंबू ब्रह्म पदम तम प्रवेश विधि भज गोविंद भज गोविंद गोविंद भज मूढ़मते सो लास्ट वीक वी सॉ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक द इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक लास्ट वीक वॉज ignorance is the root of suffering so how do we think about this so in verse number 10 it says vayasi gate ka kam avikar when age or youthfulness immaturity has passed where is lust and its play shushke nire he ka ka sara when water is dried up where is the lake kshine vitte ka parivar When wealth is gone, where's the family? Nyate tatve ka samsara. When there's knowledge, where is samsara? So, in other words, in verse number ten, we saw when the cause is not there, then the effect is not there. What is the effect that we're experiencing? We're experiencing sorrow. We're experiencing suffering. What is the cause of that? The cause of that is ignorance. So, when that ignorance is removed. suffering is also removed we saw that what makes us suffer is identifying with the limited in us when we are actually unlimited now think about this a little deeper in the waking state you and i exist we exist with our bodies our minds our sense organs we exist with all of these things. in the dream state what happens we exist without our bodies we don't take this body to the dream state we exist with without these sense organs we that's why we don't need eye glasses to see in the dream <laughs> yeah? we exist without this body we exist without our sense organs but we exist with our mind in the dream state but when we go to deep sleep state what do we see we exist without our body our sense organs and we even exist without our minds so there is an i that exists without the body exists without the senses exists without the mind there is an i that exists without time and space because in deep sleep there is no time there's no space that's why when we wake up sometimes we're like what time is it we have no idea and sometimes we don't know where we are 
So there is this I that exists throughout without all of these things. That I is you. That's your real nature. That is called Sat, existence, Chit, consciousness, and bliss, Ananda. Knowing that, then there's no reason for sorrow. Because that is untouched by anything. It's unaffected by what happens to the body, by, to the mind, and even to that ego. It's unaffected by that. Sorrow or suffering comes because we identify with the ego. We say, oh, I am this great grand ego. So naturally, when that ego is recognized, we respect it. We're very happy. When it's not, we're very sad. And we go through ups and downs of life. So know this, whenever I am suffering or I am in sorrow, it's only because I have forgotten this knowledge. I have forgotten who I really am. I've forgotten that I am Atman, the pure self, pure awareness. I've forgotten my real nature. So whenever I'm down and out and depressed and bogged down, I have forgotten who I am. I think I'm this ego and that's why I'm feeling like this. I think I'm this body, so I'm feeling and I'm going through this. So this is what it says in verse 10. And this is the essence of Vedanta, that ignorance is really the cause of suffering. Get rid of ignorance. There is no suffering because there is no ego to suffer. Hmm? So nyate tatke, upon knowledge, kahasam saraha, and we saw last week, this is not repressing it. This is actually complete understanding. This is not us trying to hide sorrow and try to bury it deep down. No, this is actually us trying to see that sorrow cannot touch me. Mm -hmm. So different events might happen, different circumstances might go on, but sorrow cannot touch me The one to the one who is enlightened. Then what happens in verse number 11, we saw, let's say somebody says, listen, I'm not suffering. I'm not going through sorrow. You're telling me sorrow, 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 but I don't know any sorrow in my life. My life is pretty good. It's pretty good. So in verse number 11, it says, wait a second. Ma kuru dhana jana yo Even if your life is good, Let's say you have a great family, great social life, you have a good career, you have wealth, health, everything. Don't take pride in that. Don't take garva. Garva, don't take pride in that. Why? Harati nimesha. It can all go away in a moment's time. Kalaha sarva. In a moment's time, everything can just go. And we never know when that will be. Maya, mayam, idam, makhyam, buddha. All this everything is just maya, this appearance, this illusion. It comes, it goes, it comes, and it goes. And therefore, he says, Brahmapadam Bhutva, after knowing this illusory nature of the world, and after knowing about Brahman, then enter into it, attain it, realize it. Bhaja Govindam, Govindam Bhaja Murva. Last week, we left off on this notion of pride. So I wanted to just continue that. What happens when we have pride? Or why is pride not even justified? So the first reason that pride is not justified, we can see in this verse, is because everything is fleeting. It will come and it will go. And we've seen this in our lives. Anything that comes will go. It's just a matter of time. It'll come, go, come, go. And that's the way life is. Prakriti is not permanent. It's not permanent. It is temporary. The second reason is that whatever we think we have achieved in life is not by our sole effort. Just think about all of the people who are responsible in helping us become what we are today. We may say, I made the money and I brought it home, or I took care of everything here, or I did everything here. We might say these things, but really, who nurtured us? How many people nurtured us? How many people taught us 
inspired us? How many people helped us along the way? How many resources did we use? There is not one thing in the world that you and I can claim we did on our own because it's impossible. There's always someone helping us. There's always a resource. There's always a team, a group. So if we take pride or even try to take pride, how can we? That means we have failed in understanding how many people contribute to our lives and to our growth. So he says, no, no garva, no pride. The third point is, if we feel like, hey, you know, but I got this skill. I developed this skill to sing. I developed this skill to write, to paint, or to do business. I really studied. I really worked hard. I really developed this skill. All of our talents and abilities are only from that divine source, which we call God that cosmic intelligence, that divine source we call God. And all we're doing is tapping into that divine source. That's all. Because we tapped into it a little bit, some of the skills came through us. But the home, the abode of all of the talents, abilities, skills, is that cosmic intelligence, which we call God. A side comparison is Google. <laughs> Let's say Google is the one who has all the information, who knows everything. And we just download one little bit, download one article, right? And we say, it's my article. Really, it's, it, it belongs to that treasure house. So the same way, the treasure house of all capabilities, capacities, abilities is God. And all we're doing is just tapping into it. So it's definitely not us. Nothing is us. I'll tell you a short joke about Google and then we will go into another beautiful meaning of how not or why not to become proud. Google and Facebook and the World Wide Web had a conversation. Google said, I know everything. And Facebook said, that's good, but I know everyone. <laughs> and the World, Wide Web, the World Wide Web said, that's good, but everything happens in me. <laughs> and then electricity came and said, what are you all talking about? And they all looked at each other and they remained silent. Why? Because without electricity, nothing can happen. You cannot have Google, you can't have Facebook, you can't have, have World Wide Web. You can talk and boast as much as you want, but the electricity goes off, everyone's doomed. <laughs> and that electricity is God, it's Bhagavan. So we can all boast, I have this, I have that. Without God, we have nothing, 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 nothing. Hmm? Why else not to become proud? You see. Our real nature is that we are the infinite self. Now imagine, we're the infinite self, infinite self. Now, if we say, I'm a millionaire, we're making ourselves so small. We're infinite. If we say, I'm so famous, we're making ourselves small. I'm so knowledgeable. I have like two PhDs. Again, we're making ourselves so small. We are that infinite Atman. Why do you want to make yourself a PhD person or a socialite or a billionaire? Why? You're limiting yourself. We limit ourselves when we think that we are all so great. Hmm? You are already infinite. What could be better than that? <laughs> that is indeed the greatest compliment that anybody can ever give you. The greatest compliment that anybody can give you is in our Upanishads. You are infinite, you are unlimited. You are the source of everything. A oh, wife fish for any other compliment. Hmm? So whenever you're feeling down, open an Upanishad, open the Bhagavad Gita and let your real nature be revealed to you. Hmm? So no need to have pride knowing that ultimate truth, enter into it. Remain into it. Now, today we'll start the 12th verse. So in the 11th verse, he was talking about time. 
time takes away everything in the blink of an eye. What is this time? What is the play of time? So this comes in verse number 12. Dinaya, um, maybe Rashmi Kaji, I'll unmute you so you can repeat after me. Dinaya minyo sayam prataha. Dinaya minyo sayam prataha. Shirava Santa Punarayata. Shirava Santa Punarayata. Kala Krida Tiga Chatya Yuhu. Kala Krida Tiga Chatya Yuhu. Tada Pina Mun Chatya Shava Yuhu. Tada Pina Mun Chatya Shava Yuhu. Okay, we'll chant this now together. Dinaya minyo sayam prata shishirava santo punarayata kala krida tiga chatyayu tadapina munchatya shabayu vajago vindam vajago vindam Govindam Bhaja Mudhamati. So verse 12, the caption line is, use your time to climb. What happens here? Dinaya minyo. Dina and dina means day. Yamini means night. Dinaya minyo. Day and night. Sayam dusk. Prataha dawn. Shishira Vasanto. Shishira means winter. Vasanta means spring. Shishira Vasanto. Punaha ayataha. They come again and depart. Kalaha kridati. Time sports. It plays around. Gachati ayuhu. And life goes away. Tadapi namunchati. Yet one does not leave. Asha vayuhu. That gust of desires. Therefore, bhaja govindam, bhaja govindam, govindam, bhaja mudamate. Therefore, seek govinda, seek govinda. Oh, fools, he's talking to all of us. Every day, we're getting older. <laughs> Not every day, but every moment, we're getting older. And we always say, you know, things like, I don't have time. Someone asks us to do something. We're like, oh, I don't have time to do it. I don't have time to do that. But what's the reality? The reality is that we have time, but we waste a lot of it. We waste a lot of it. Sometimes we sleep too much and we waste inviting the day, being able to do our sadhana. Sometimes we eat a lot and we get so bloated that we can't even think about anything. Or we'll watch so much of something so incredibly useless and all junk is stuck in our head. Or we'll have the craziest nonsense conversation that doesn't really mean anything. And we do these things and we waste a lot of time. So it's not that we don't have time. We have time, but we waste a lot of it. We waste a lot of it. And, and we feel like it's not enough. We feel like it's not enough and we still want to enjoy. We still want to enjoy. Day is passing into night. Night is becoming day. Winter is going to become spring. Spring is going to become summer. Slowly time is just going to keep going and going and going. But have we evolved? Have we grown? What is growth in Vedanta? Growth means have I gone closer to God? Have I realized, gotten closer to realizing my true nature? Have I gotten closer to enlightenment? Have I, have I gotten closer to that? That's evolution. Have I grown? If a day is spent without thinking about God, reflecting upon the truth, that is a wasted day. If I have spent one day 
I did not think about God. I did not think about truth. I did not inquire into who I am. I did not sing, did not chant his name. That's a wasted day. One beautiful saint said, you can only count your life by the number of days that you've remembered God because only those days are really worth it. All the other days don't even deserve to be called day. How can you even call it day when we didn't realize or didn't think about the one who brings about a day? This is what happens to us. We just pass time and, and we, we continue to do it. There's a story of this man named Amrita. And he wanted to become immortal. He wanted to become immortal. Like everybody else in the Puranas, they want to become immortal. So he said, let me make friends with Yamaraj, the Lord of Death. And so he makes friends with Yamaraj. And he goes to the abode of death. He goes to the abode of death. And he tells Yamaraj, I want to ask something from you. And Yamaraj, she says, don't ask me to be immortal because it's impossible. Everybody has to die. You will also die. So Amrita said, okay, I have to die, but at least you write me a letter before I die. Give me some kind of warning so that I know I have to go because you know I need to prepare everything. What about my family? What about my 401k? What about my will? What about all of these things, you know? I don't want to just go like that. You just give me a warning. So Yamraj said, fine, I'll give you a warning. Now go back to earth. So this Amrita went back to earth. So Amrita was now growing, growing day by day. All of a sudden, he got gray hair. He looked in the mirror, he got gray hair. He looked and said, oh, ooh, gray hair is coming. What did he do? He went to CVS or Dwayne Reed and he bought hair dye. But hair dye and he dyed his hair black. So he said, I still want to look young. Still want to go out, have fun. So let's do this. Okay, fine. So nice black hair he had. Then after some time, he noticed that his teeth started falling out. And this is very, very hard in old age because, you know, you don't have strong teeth and you want to eat things that are hard. You want to eat like a chocolate or a muruku, you want to eat these hard things, but you cannot because the teeth can't take it, right? And so he said, now what do I do? My teeth, you know, they're soft, they're falling out. So he got dentures. He said, I'm going to get dentures. So I can also eat all of these things. Because when you, when you go to parties, you see these things which are so hard and you want to bite into them. So you have to have good teeth. So, okay, he got dentures. Then as he grew, he noticed that his eyesight was fading. You know, he couldn't really see things properly. And so he said, I'll go for eye surgery. Now, nowadays they have some kind of surgery. You get 20-20 vision so that I can see everything. I still want to see the world. I still want to travel. I still want to go here and there. I have so many desires to fulfill. I have a bucket list. So what are you talking about? Let's go. So Amrita did that. And then what happens was he, his body started becoming weak and his uh, back started becoming curved and he couldn't walk so much anymore. So he had a cane. He said, I still want to go. I still want to go. You know, still go, still go. He gets a cane, he gets a cane. And uh, he still pursues his desires. He still goes out into the world. He wants his wealth. He wants his social life. He wants his name, fame. He pursues his desires. And then one day, Yamaraj came to visit him and said, oh, Amrita, time up. He said, he said what? You, you didn't even, you didn't write me a letter. You didn't give me a warning. How can time be up? I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I still have four things in my bucket list. Four things. No, no, no. Time is up. You have to go. But you didn't keep your contract. Yamaraj said, I gave you four letters. I gave you four letters. Your hair became gray. That was the first letter. What did you do? You got hair dye. The second letter, your teeth started falling out. What did you do? You got dentures. The third letter, your eyes started fading. What did you do? You got surgery. And the fourth letter, your back started curving and your legs started slowing down, but you got a cane. 
He said, I sent you four reminders, four letters that time is passing by, slowly, slowly going away. But yet you did not think about God. You did not go inward. You did not think about what life is really about. You just were carried by your gusto desires. And now you have to go. And so like that, Amrita became Mrita. Amrita departed. And that's our story. That's our story. Huh? Every time we're reminded, have we gone inside? Have we talked? Have we thought about God? Have we cried for God? Have we inquired into the truth? Have we spent a day worthwhile just thinking in that? No. And so many things will come to pass and come to pass and come to pass. Who knows if we will ever do that? Someone might say, but you don't understand. Life is so fascinating. I mean, there's so many wonderful things to go see outside. Haven't you seen New York City? Don't you know where we live? <laughs> yes, I live here too. But life isn't about the scene. Please remember, life isn't about what we see. It's about the ultimate seer. The scene, the, the sights, the things we hear, the things that we taste and smell are only to go to that ultimate seer. The whole of creation is only to go to the creator. So don't get lost in all of these visuals. Come to the one who enables us to see, who enables us to hear, to smell, to taste. In Keno Upanishad, it's very beautiful. A student tries to inquire, what is truth? And the teacher says, go to the eye of the eye, the ear of the ear, the breath of the breath. That is truth. Don't get stuck in the world of the senses. Go into the one who enables every sense to be alive. And that is truth. That is what life's for. It's to inquire into the seer and not get lost into the sea. And so what should we spend our time on? Our time should be spent on evolution, on growth, on purifying our body, mind, the intellect, cultivating a healthy body so that we can serve, so that we can truly use or be used as an instrument to serve and to perform our dharma to the best of our abilities. Purify the mind in listening to stories, listening to songs, reading about that truth so that it becomes divinized. Make the intellect sharp, inquire, reflect, contemplate so that we are able to realize who we really are. Life is meant for self-development. So this verse tells us, use your time to climb. Use your time not to climb and not to just while away, like Amrita in the story that we heard. Hmm? This is what he says in verse 12. Paja Govindam, Paja Govindam, Govindam, Paja Murti. Now, somebody who's looking at this verse might say, you might say, you know, okay, use your time for self-development. Use your time to cultivate a healthy body, a pure mind, a brilliant intellect. Use your time for that. But I have so many things to worry about. Have you not seen my life? I, I have a family to take care of. I have parents. I have children. We have medical insurance. We have bills to pay. We've got so many things on our shoulders. How are we going to use time for to evolve, for evolution? I have so many things to do. I have so many things on my shoulders. Mm. So to that person who has this in the mind, Adi Shankaracharya Ji brings about verse number 13. This is one of the most beautiful verses in Pajako. And so let's see this verse. 
Makurudhana Jana Yovana Garva. Oh, no, not that. Kate Kanta Dhanagata Chinta. Kate Kanta Dhanagata Chinta. Patula Kim Tavana Stinianta. Vatula Kim Tavana Stinianta. Vijagati Sajana Sangati Reka. Three Jagati Sajana Sangita Reka. Havati Bavarna Vatarane Noka. Bavati Bavarpa Tarane Noka. Okay, we'll chant together. Kate Kanta Dhanagata Chinta Patula Kim Tavanasti Nianta Trijagati Sachana Sangati Reka Tavati Bavarna Vatarane Noka Pajago Vindam Pajago Vindam Go Vindam these beautiful verses, you know, were chanted and are, are taught to children in school. <laughs> These verses of Bhaja Govindam. So they're very, very beautiful, melodious and something that we can chant whenever we want to reflect and think deeper. The tagline for this verse is, Worry is an insult to God. Worry is an insult to God. What does this verse say? Kate kanta dhanagata chinta means where is your wife or husband or family, children? Where are they? Dhana, where's wealth? Gata chinta. Why are you worrying about all of these things? Your wealth, your family, etc. Vatula, oh vatula, oh distracted one. Why are you worrying about all of this? Kim Tavanastinianta, isn't there an ordainer in this whole world? Trijagati Sajjana Sangate Reka. Trijagati, in all of these three worlds, there is Eka. There's an Eka Nauka. There's one boat. Bavar Navatarane. There's one boat Tarane to cross over the sea of Samsara. Bavar Nava. What is that? Sajjana Sangati, the company or association with the good. So how does this read? Oh, distracted one. Why worry about wife, husband, children, family, wealth, and so on? Is there not for you the one who ordains rules and commands? In the three worlds, it is the association with the good people alone that can serve as a boat to cross the sea of change. Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Govindam, Bhaja Murmate. So what is he saying here? Ah, so we have all of these worries. You know, we feel like if we spend so much time in evolution, think about God, who will think about my family? <laughs> who will pay the bills? Bhagavan says, why are you worried? What does worry do? Worry does one thing. Worry makes us, you know, think constantly, constantly, constantly about the future. It, it makes us focus so much on the future with anxiety. It prevents us from creating the present. So worry makes us anxious about the future instead of creating the present. This is what worry does. And Puja Gurudev says such a beautiful thing. Worry is like a rocking chair. Gives you something to do, but doesn't get you anywhere. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said this very beautiful verse. Ananyash chintayanto maam ye jana paryupasate te sham nitya vyuktanam yoga kshemam baham yam. It says this. Look. Everybody has these two main worries in life. And what are they? Yoga and Kshema. 
Yoga here means acquiring things, acquiring things. Kshema means protecting what I have acquired. So yoga means we want to acquire some meanings. We want to acquire wealth. We want to acquire status. We want to acquire fame. We want to acquire so many things. And then we have to spend all the time protecting it. We acquire so much wealth and now where to keep it? Where is safe? We acquire so much uh, fame, etc. how to protect it. There's so many things going on on Twitter and, and YouTube and this and that. So anything that we acquire, we always then have this anxiety or worry to protect it. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, look, you just worship me. Do your dharma, no doubt. Do your dharma. Dedicate all your actions to me. Do everything as a worship of me. And don't you worry, I will take care of everything you need and I will protect everything that you have acquired. This is Bhagavan's message. Why? How do we know that? Because Bhagavan is the Niyanta. Bhagavan or God, that universal intelligence is the ordainer of the universe. Haven't you seen that everything's run so, so smoothly? There's never a day where the sun doesn't shine. Huh? The sun doesn't take a day off. Oh, I'm going to take a day off and not shine today. There's that the sun works beautifully. The laws of nature work in such a consistent, cohesive consistency. The plants bloom, the grass grow, the winds, the winds blow. And have you seen that when a mother has a, a fetus in her womb, who, who is taking care of that? Does the mother say, I'm um, creating bones for the baby right now? Or I'm making blood for the baby right now? Does the mother say that? No, the, the fetus has come in the womb. And slowly, slowly, it's growing. It's growing. Blood's forming. Bones are forming. Muscles are forming. And this baby is slowly coming alive. What a miracle. And when this baby comes out of the stomach, what happens is the baby doesn't have teeth. And the baby knows that it has to take milk from the mother. And the mother has the ability to all of a sudden give milk to the baby. How, how, how does this happen? And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, after some time, then the baby starts to develop teeth. Now, everything just happens so perfectly. I mean, did you ever wonder how come there's so much order in the world? How come we have two eyes and not four? <laughs> four meaning four real eyes or six. Uh, we have two eyes, we have two nostrils. We have like five fingers on each everything is it's so perfect how how a fish has gills so that it can breathe under water how a bird has a wings so it can fly above air everything is made so perfectly and there's a perfect order in the universe it's perfect and that that cosmic intelligence or who we call god is the karma phala data it's because of god that everybody gets whatever karma phala, whatever the results of actions they're meant to get, they get. That's the niyanta. And haven't you seen that in how many ever long your life has been, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, how many ever long your life has been, you have gotten everything you need. God never promised, I'll give you whatever your greed is. No. God has promised whatever you need will be given to you. So if something was required, you would have received it. If something was not required, you wouldn't have gotten it. If there was not one day where you and I were not taken care of. Not one day. Now, if there is such an ordainer of the universe, protector of the universe, who governs the whole universe, who's governed everything, who's taken care of us in every which way. Sometimes in our most desperate moments, somebody will come all of a sudden to help us. That is God. Don't you think that God will take care of what's to come? Provided we do our part also. 
So when we worry, it's an insult to God. It's an insult to this universal intelligence that knows what to do. Just imagine now if your kids were older uh, and they were in college and they're, they're like, okay, mom, dad, we're coming home, but we don't know if there's going to be food at home. How absurd does that sound, right? You're, really, you're coming to my house. Of course, there's going to be food at home. Or they say, mom, dad, we're coming home, but we don't know if there's going to be a bed to sleep in. You're going to say that even if I don't have a bed, you will have a bed. You're coming to my house. So if, if your children were to worry about where they're going to eat, where they're going to sleep, what's going to happen to them, isn't it an insult to you? It's an insult to you because you're the caretaker of them. Now, God, who is our parent, it's an insult to God. If we wonder where, what's going to happen to us, you know, where are we going to be? It's an insult to God. We've been taken care for so many, many, many years. What makes us think we will not be taken care of? There was this one lady. She was taking care of a lot of children. You know, she had this institute where she was taking care of a lot of children. And somebody asked her, why are you so, how are you so calm and so at ease and so able to run this and manage this so well? She said, I have a contract with God. What's your contract? I work and let God worry. <laughs> I work and let God worry. Work is our dharma. Worrying lets God do. Why do we have to take that up? We do the opposite. We worry and we say, God, please make this work happen. Please make that work happen. Please make this work happen. We do the opposite. And some of us, we, we surrender to God. We say, okay, God, I'm surrendering this problem to you. I'm surrendering everything to you. I'm letting it go. But after the prayer, I'm worried about it again. <laughs> then if you're going to worry about it, then God's going to be like, I'm not going to worry about it. Why do you have two people doing the same thing? It's poor management skills, <laughs> right? So Bhagavan's very clear. If you're going to worry, God's not going to worry. But if you and I just focus on work, let God take care of everything else, then God will. God will. Even in our daily lives, when we give somebody a task and we go to them and we keep asking them, did you do it? Did you do it? Did you do it? They're going to say, well, if you keep asking about it, you might as well do it yourself. <laughs> Why don't you trust me? Hmm? So when we worry, it's a lack of faith. Some people find that Worrying is a sign of love. Oh, you know, I worry about you. I worry about you. It's a sign of ignorance. It's a lack of faith. If we really trusted someone, if we really trusted in the higher power, then we would not worry. There's this beautiful story of uh, Lord Krishna and Arjuna, and it comes in the Mahabharata. You know, you know the Mahabharata war is taking place, and uh, it must have been eight or nine days of battle, nine, probably nine days of battle. Uh, Duryodhana is so upset. He's so incredibly upset. And why is he upset? Because Bhishma is fighting so strongly. Uh, Bhishma, the commander of the Kaurava army, is fighting so strongly, but none of the Pandavas have died. The Pandavas are still alive. And so Duryodhana goes to Bhishma and says, what are you doing in this battlefield? Are you playing games or what? How come the Pandavas are still alive? And Bhishma got so mad. He said, how can you talk to a warrior like that? And that Bhishma, is, Bhishma is a very senior warrior. Got so mad at Duryodhana. He said, listen, I'm going to take a vow. And he speaks so, so loudly. I'm going to take a vow. Tomorrow, either I will kill Arjuna or Arjuna will be killed. He takes a huge vow. And, you know, at that time, you know, they announced the vow and people were in their tents. And so everybody heard that vow and there was tremor everywhere. You know, people were shaking because Arjuna is the, you know, he's, he's the greatest fighter. And so Yudhishthira heard it, Nakula, Sahadeva, they all heard it. Lord Krishna heard it. He said, what to do now? Lord Krishna heard it, heard it, and he couldn't sleep at night. He said, I can't sleep. What must Arjuna be thinking? You know, he loves Arjuna. What does Arjuna be thinking? 
Let me go to his tent and see. So Lord Krishna goes to Arjuna's tent. Goes to Arjuna's tent. What happens? Arjuna's sleeping. He's in deep sleep. And Lord Krishna wakes him up. What are you doing? Arjuna, didn't you hear? Didn't you hear that vow of uh, Bhishma? Arjuna said, yeah, I heard the vow of Bhishma. I heard what's going to happen. So Lord Krishna said, aren't you worried? Arjuna said, no, why would I worry? You're there. <laughs> you promised to take care of my yoga and kshema. You promised whatever that I need, you will provide. And whatever needs to be protected, you will protect. So why will I worry? You're there. And Lord Krishna just smiled. He said, this is why Arjuna is Arjuna. And that is really why Lord Krishna is the charioteer of Arjuna. And we even call Lord Krishna Partha Sarathi. Sarathi, the charioteer of Partha. Hmm? That's the trust he has in God. Now just imagine if you and I could let go like that. How beautiful would our lives be? Hmm? So this verse says, what is that chinta? What is that worry? Replace that worry with chintanam, with right thinking. Replace that worry with right thinking. What is this worry about health? What will happen to me? Family, about this wealth, all of these people, what will happen with everything? What is this worry? Vatula, oh distracted one, what is this worry? Kimtavanastiniyanta, haven't you seen this ordainer called God? Have you not seen this? for all of your entire life. And in case you ever forget about that ordainer, don't worry. Trijagati, sajjana, sangati. Spend your time in satsanga. Spend your time in association, in companionship with the good. And this alone will be the boat to take you across samsara. And he says, bhaja govindam, bhaja govindam. Therefore, worry is an insult to God. So whenever we're worrying, we're insulting that universal intelligence who has been there for us through and through. And we cannot deny that. Okay, I'll pause here for a moment to see if anyone has questions. So I'll just summarize and we'll spend, as I said, a few moments in silence. Today we saw two very beautiful verses. Verse 12, which really says, use our time to climb. Every day, every breath, let's use it to evolve, to grow closer and closer to the truth, closer and closer to the realization of who we are. Then only we can say that time is really, really valuable and worth it. And in verse number 13, we saw that there is no need to worry about anything at all. There's a niyanta. There's a great, great God who will take care of everything. So just let everything go. Enjoy. Focus on what we need to do. Focus on our self-development. Focus on performing our duties to the best of our abilities. And everything works out magically. Mm -hmm. So we'll sit quietly for some time. Just keep your back straight. Just relax. I'll just chant three ohms. We'll relax the body a little bit. Do a short prayer and then we'll close. Oh. 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 Relax your body. Relax your feet. Legs, your 
Relax your knees, your thighs, your hips. Relax your stomach, your chest. Lower back and upper back. Relax your shoulders, arms, and hands. Relax the neck and face, forehead, and the crown of the head. And relax the entire body. Just relax, relax, relax. Let everything go. Anything disturbing us, any worry, any stress, any cause to feel a little bit down, just let everything completely, completely go. The most important time is here and is now. I'll chant Guru Brahma, and as I chant this, just feel that attitude of surrender to God, to our Guru Parampara, and let them take care of everything. Whatever is ha to happen, let it happen. Know that we won't get anything in our lives which we cannot have. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Deva Param Brahma, Asmai Shri Gurave. Namaha, salutations and surrender. We'll spend a few moments in silence. Oh, shanti, shanti, shanti. Hari Om, Shri Guru Pyo Namaha. Hari Om. Hari Om, everybody. Wishing you a worry-free. Beautiful light. Stay warm. Hi, y'all.